Welcome back to another Smart Architect tutorial, guys. In this tutorial, I want us to take a look at Revit rendering. We're gonna get started here, and clearly you're gonna wanna know how to get renderings that are well refined or even just for your own design studies along the way. So I want us to jump into the steps that we're going to use in this Get It Started tutorial. So I'm gonna come up here to view, first of all, because one thing I want to talk a little bit about is our rendering options. So here on the view tab, you'll see we have render in program, render in cloud and render gallery right here in this particular panel. And the render option may not be available in the product if you're working from Revit LT, this option would not be there. You'll, you can only render in the cloud. And I will tell you that I render approximately at least 75% of my renderings are done in the cloud, especially upfront design studies where I wanna take a look at the design and process. And so let's start by exploring the render in cloud option. So if I click on this render in cloud, Revit brings up this dialog box for Autodesk 360. And they've tried to keep this extremely simple. So there's they pretty much divided it into a three-step process. And I'm just gonna click continue. And when I click continue, what, what Revit's gonna bring up for us is the different 3D views in our project as it tries to open up the dialog box in 360 of, hey, which views do you wanna render? So you can see from my 3D list, I have quite a few views that I've generated, some exterior, some interior, and some like the view you're seeing on screen are more like an axon, and I've just named them accordingly. So here's the dialog box. Select the 3D views, and you see, one of the most awesome things about rendering in the cloud here in Revit is unlike using the end product rendering, which does consume your computer for the time being that it's producing that rendering. I use the cloud rendering feature, which is, you know, it's gonna be available for you if you're a subscription member. So what does that mean? If you currently are a student, and I'm gonna put a link to the download the student version because that includes subscription for students. Your subscription is free, but for the paying customers, for us paying customers who are using it for professional work, for profit, then you've purchased some sort of subscription at this time. Autodesk is moving everything to subscription anyway. And I'm going to, right here, the first thing I wanna do is pick the views. We can render multiple views in the cloud at one time. So I'm going to do, for you a 3D axon, and I'm even gonna pick one of my exterior views. And if I just pick these two, for example, then let's change this drop down. You'll see it's rendering multiple 3D views. We have two of them. The output, we're gonna use, we wanna do a still image. We're just doing a still image, but you can see from this dialog box, we can produce a panorama, um, an illuminance image that helps us to be able to study the lighting in our particular spaces. There's a lot of very cool features, uh, very informative features here that we can use along the way in producing renderings. Now I wanna show you, there's two different qualities. There's standard and final for the render quality. And let me show you the difference. With standard, this cloud rendering feature uses credits. So I know by default with a basic Autodesk subscription, you'll get 100 credits. So this, currently just for this demonstration, I'm using uh, as a part of my adjunct work, being a faculty member, I have access to show the students how to do the different tutorials using my student account, which will leave you an unlimited amount. But as a part of my professional, for example, I have 100 credits. So depending on the level of your subscription, your amount of cloud credits will move up. But to get back to what I'm saying, for a standard quality image, it's not actually going to, these test renders will not use any of your cloud credits, which is a benefit, but it does not give you the final output level. So 
the image will want to be eventually rendered and final if you're using these as presentation images for a particular client. And when I change that drop down of quality for the render to final, you'll see that it now is going to use two of my cloud credits. So I would recommend that you use standard when you're just starting out and you'll see as well as the image size. If you use medium, clearly that's about a one pixel image here that medium will not use as well. But if I try to produce a large image, which is going to get, you know, above that two megapixel range, you're going to see it's going to start to use some of my cloud credits. So you can see the extra large image and I predominantly use maybe a large occasionally depending on the final image size you're looking for. If you're printing these for large boards and so forth, you might want to use something bigger, but let's just get through the steps. I'm going to leave it right there at minimum because a standard minimum image, medium image size will not use any of our credits. And I'm going to leave it right here on advance and you can see a PNG. I typically will use PNG, especially if I want to keep the background. If I click on PNG, if you check the alpha box, that will lead the background of your image where you can go into Photoshop and add a layer with that background beyond your image and it will show through whether you have windows and so forth. And I'm sure we'll get into this further as I produce this rendering series here in Revit. So I'm going to leave this alone for now and we'll just do a JPEG. And if I, I can check this box, it will even email me when this rendering is complete, but I'm going to hit start rendering. It gives me my estimated wait time as well. So you can see for these 10 minutes is about how long it's anticipating it's going to take to render in the cloud. But the benefit and the beauty of the cloud is I'm able to continue to work in the model because the resources that are being used in the cloud, the cloud pretty much is we're being able to take advantage of Autodesk servers that have much more capacity than any of our individual computers. And it's processing and completing the render in the cloud and providing us with the image. Major benefit, major benefit. I can tell you there's been weekends I've spent with images rendering for days, um, especially during my undergraduate time. You know, the further back that you get in technology, it used to take time. And I'm sure some of you have some more stories of how long some of your renderings have taken over time. But you'll see at the point that initially it takes a little bit of time because Revit is what, it, what it's doing is Revit is actually uploading the scene to Autodesk 360. And so now once it's done, I'm going to hit continue in background. And when I do that up here, you'll see it's just kind of spinning. This is where it just, this is a notification that it's continuing in Autodesk 360. And so I could continue to work in my model and work on things as I produce these test renderings. That's pretty awesome. And to me, that's the biggest difference between in product and not in product rendering. Now, the next thing I want to show you while that's even rendering is if we click this render gallery button, this render gallery button is going to take us out to the rendering in Autodesk A360 website. And you'll see, I have a couple of different projects here, but this one is actually going to show you exactly where each one of those images we sent to the cloud are in process. So I'm going to change this drop down. You can always let this be whatever you want it to be, but it'll show you by default the latest renderings. I'm going to hit all renderings in this project and you'll see that it's Revit's just kind of rendering and going along through. You'll see the status bar for this exterior perspective and for the axon that I was rendering as well. So I'm just, since this one's already done, you know, we're well within the 10 minutes, but I'm going to click on this drop down and it's going to give us a much larger preview where we can just kind of see. And you can see that the standard allows me to see what elements appear, how they look. We can even download the image and I'll show you how to do that here. If I just click on the arrow, you'll see the options that we have here. You can re-render it re-render it with new settings. You can render it as a panorama and so forth. Um, 
you can hide the preview, you can download that image so that you can take it into Photoshop or other graphic programs to you know organize your display board, whether you're bringing it into an Autodesk or an, an Adobe InDesign program, you can adjust the exposure. So there's lots of options right here in Autodesk 360 that complement what you're doing with your renderings. And now at this point, even our exterior rendering is done. So because we're using the cloud, I can tell you, if you read right here our temporary box, you'll see that the render time was about 31 seconds. You can't beat that um, for being able to see an exterior image rendered of your project. As you get into the final quality renderings, it will take you longer. However, it's not monopolizing your machine. So. Um, who cares? It, it's rendering in the crowd in the cloud off site and you're able to even get an email. And so I've done many hundreds of test renders because this does not utilize my computer. So I'm able to continue with what I'm doing. An example of the this particular project. But this just shows you some of the initial renderings. I was this is like the first draft. So I had yet to model some of the site elements and things, but you can see exactly what I was able to get very quickly just from a cloud rendering. This is no modification. You can see this is a standard level, so this shows you. It is a little bit fuzzy, but at this point, I'm just trying to get a sense of my project and see these draft renderings. So I can just kind of see the elements in this great social space that we're creating that's going to be nice and flexible use for that community center there. But that's that right there is the first draft. And then I want to just quickly show you, let me show you the second draft. This is actually closer to the final level of rendering actually. So between the first draft and here in our final level of rendering, you can kind of see the differences in some of the spaces. So I, I did a small rendering, you know, when it's minimal effort, I'm able to produce renderings that may not be even distributed to the client, but help to better inform my design team. So here's the commercial kitchen from a couple of different angles. Here's that exterior axon again with a little bit more site development that we did here. Their exterior front play space. You can just kind of see in better detail and these are final level renderings so these cost a few crowd a few of those cloud credits but i'm able to produce the renderings very similar to how we did just now i hope this tutorial has been helpful for you i hope you have benefited and if you have any questions about rendering in the cloud particularly based on this video please leave them in the comment box and continue to subscribe to the Smart Architect channel. If this is beneficial for you, thumbs up. Hey guys, I hope this is helpful. The course is gonna be coming soon and this is definitely, the cloud feature is one that I would strongly encourage you to utilize in all your projects if for nothing more than doing your design studies. Thanks guys.